Back in 2006, the United Nations stated, the livestock sector emerges as one of the top two or three most significant contributors to the most serious environmental problems at every scale from local to global. The findings of this report suggest that it should be a major policy focus when dealing with problems of land degradation, climate change and air pollution, water shortage and water pollution, and the loss of biodiversity. And then, four years later, they warned that a global shift towards a vegan diet is vital to save the world from hunger, fuel poverty, and the worst impacts of climate change. So why exactly is animal farming bad for the environment? Globally, 26% of all the world's ice-free land surface is given to grazing animals. And in total, animal agriculture uses 83% of all agricultural land. Yet it provides less than 20% of the calories consumed and less than 40% of the protein that is consumed. In the UK, it is estimated that 85% of the land that is used for agriculture is just for animals, which is almost 50% of the entire landmass of the UK. And in the US, 41% of the entire landmass is for animal farming, compared to 4%, which is used to grow plants directly for humans. With half of all agricultural land in the US being used specifically for beef production, even though it only makes up 3% of dietary calories. Animal farming is the leading cause of rainforest deforestation, the single largest driver of habitat loss in general, and agriculture, which also includes the farming of fish, is listed as being a threat to 24,000 of the 28,000 species that are currently threatened with extinction. And when it comes to the Brazilian Amazon specifically, cattle ranching is reportedly responsible for 80% of rainforest loss. With a recent investigation showing that in 2019, fires in the Amazon were three times more common in areas where there is cattle ranching. When it comes to soy, about 75% of all the soy that is produced is used for animal feed, with only 6% of whole soybeans that are produced being used to produce plant-based products like tofu, soy milk, and other plant-based alternatives. When it comes to emissions, a University of Oxford report stated that even if fossil fuel emissions were eliminated immediately, the emissions produced by the agriculture sector alone would make it impossible to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius and would even make it difficult to not hit 2 degrees. This means that changes to our food system are essential if we want to avoid making the coral reefs disappear, creating more extreme heat waves, water scarcities, droughts and food shortages for hundreds of millions more people, forcing them to be climate refugees. And it's essential if we want to avoid the continuing demise of the world's biodiversity, increasing rates of dead zones in species extinction, and the rising of sea levels, causing the flooding of major cities such as Mumbai, Shanghai, Miami, and New York, with there even being the potential for islands in the South Pacific Ocean to disappear completely. Animal agriculture is responsible for producing between 14.5 and 18% of total greenhouse gas emissions, which makes it responsible for more emissions than the combined exhausts of all transport globally. The fishing method of bottom trawling alone is responsible for producing the same amount of emissions as the entire aviation industry. Switching to a plant-based diet could reduce agricultural emissions by as much as 73% in high-income nations. And a study that analyzed 313 different potential food systems discovered that the highest greenhouse gas emissions were found in the food systems that included a high meat demand, especially focused on ruminant meat and milk, whilst the lowest emissions came from the vegan diets. But what about local animal products? Are they not more sustainable than buying plant foods from abroad? Well, not according to the science. In fact, when it comes to beef, only 0.5% of the emissions come from the transportation. And for lamb, it's only 2%. Meaning that the issue of animal farming is the farming itself. Even with plant foods like avocados, only 8% of the total footprint comes from the traveling itself. In fact, for most food products, the transportation accounts for less than 10%, with the higher transportation percentage simply being a reflection of the fact that the food naturally produces lower amounts of greenhouse gases. Furthermore, a report comparing greenhouse gas emissions from the average diet across countries in the EU revealed that transportation was only responsible for 6% of the total emissions related to diets. And when 
the results were broken down by food items, animal products were shown to be responsible for 83% of emissions in the average EU diet, compared to only 17% coming from plant-based foods. In the US, the climate impacts of food choice were analysed, and food transport was shown to only account for 5% of emissions in the average US household. This equals around 0.4 tonnes of CO2 equivalent. However, the study showed that substituting calories from red meat and dairy to plant-based alternatives for just one day a week would save 0.46 tonnes of CO2 equivalent. This means that eating plant-based over red meat and dairy just one day a week would achieve the same result as having a diet with zero food miles. The only way that buying local animal products could be more sustainable is if the farming of different foods was environmentally the same to begin with, and the only difference was the miles the two foods had to travel. This is obviously not the case. But isn't regenerative beef good for the environment because grazing cattle can absorb carbon back into the soils? Well, not according to the meta-analyses that have been conducted on the matter that state that although certain grazing managements can put carbon into the soil, at best, this would only amount to 20-60% to 60 of the emissions that the animals produce in the first place. And besides, after a few decades, the soil reaches soil carbon equilibrium, which means the soil cannot sequester any more carbon, at which point none of the emissions from the animals would be offset. So farmers would either have to start grazing on more land, increasing the land used for animal farming, or stop the farming. Meaning that grazing animals is not an effective short-term or long-term strategy for dealing with the problem either. In the words of one of the lead researchers, grazing livestock are net contributors to the climate problem, as are all livestock. Rising animal production and consumption, whatever the farming system and animal type, is causing damaging greenhouse gas release and contributing to changes in land use. Even the lowest impact beef is responsible for six times more greenhouse gases and a staggering 36 times more land than plant proteins such as peas. Plus, there are more beneficial things we can do with the land. For example, research into the US food system found that reconfiguring cropland from animal feed to entirely human edible crops, particularly ones that promote positive health outcomes such as fruits, vegetables, and pulses, would feed an additional 350 million people compared to what the same area of land produces in the current US food system. To put that into perspective, there are around 330 million people in the US, meaning another nation the size of the US could be fed with just the cropland that is used to currently feed animals there. Furthermore, in the UK, just one third of the cropland currently used to grow animal feeds could provide 62 million adults their five servings of fruits and vegetables a day all year, which incidentally is almost the entire UK population. Plus, if the world shifted to a plant-based diet, we could feed every mouth on the planet and global farmland could also be reduced by more than 75%, which when put into perspective is the equivalent size of China, Australia, the US and the entire European Union combined no longer being needed for agriculture. We could reforest and restore this land, bringing back lost habitats and reversing the decimation of the world's biodiversity. It is also estimated that by returning animal farms to natural vegetation, we could remove the equivalent of 8.1 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere each year. This is about 15% of the world's total greenhouse gas emissions. So not only would a plant-based diet reduce total annual emissions by around 13%, but it would also allow us to sequester a further 15% of total annual carbon emissions on top of that. Switching to a plant-based diet would also mean reducing soil acidification and eutrophication, which is the process that creates algae blooms in dead zones, by 50%. And all of the issues related to animal farming have come from a planet with just under 8 billion people on it. Within the next 30 years, our population is expected to increase to 10 billion people. However, global trends as they are now are showing that animal product consumption is increasing regardless of the growing population. This means that by 2050, the overall demand for animal-based foods will be 70% higher than it is currently, and specifically, ruminant meat will be 88% higher. This means that an additional 593 million hectares of land will be needed, which is the equivalent size of two Indias. Something clearly has to change, and change quickly. How much more rainforest needs to be cut down or set on fire? 
Do major cities and entire islands need to be submerged underwater? How much more habitat needs to be destroyed? And how many more species need to go extinct? How many more people need to suffer from food and water scarcity? And how many more climate refugees does there need to be before we realize that we need to change our food system? And don't just take it from me. The lead author of the largest and most comprehensive analysis ever conducted, analyzing the impact that food and agriculture has on the environment, stated that a vegan diet is probably the single biggest way to reduce your impact on planet Earth. It's been 11 years since the UN told us that we need to shift to a plant-based diet. We don't have another decade to spare.